Now we're going to get into today, we're going to talk about how to create awesome posts that will increase shares. So in the next 15 minutes, I want to talk about design and layout and how important it is to frame your images and your text so it appears uh, in a great way on everybody's pages. We're going to look at photography and get a couple of tips from a really great photographer who I'm a huge fan of. And we're also going to look at video and how that is rising in popularity and also get a couple of really great tips from my friends who have a video production company. And at the end, there's a really great present, a little gift for you, which I want to share with you. It's a really great offer, and I really hope you take me up on it. So why is visual so powerful? Well, the stats are out there, and it's astonishing how we really learn visually over listening. So if you look at the bottom two stats, we've got how if we heard something and three days later, if you asked us what we heard, only 10% of us would remember. We don't remember what we heard or 10% of that conversation. But if you combined it with a video or a picture, of in also including with the listening, it's 65% retention rate after three days, which is amazing. Last week, we talked about how you could use quotes and how a text can be really um, uh, wonderful if it's combined with an image. We looked at tw This Hour Has 22 Minutes, which is a Canadian television show where if you just do a text, but if you add it with an image with text, it goes a lot further and it will get noticed more. Social media is saturated with images. We've got Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook, and many others. And then on the bottom right, there's Periscope and Meerkat, which is live broadcast uh, apps, which you can have on your phone. And you can actually turn yourself into your own TV channel, your own TV station, and broadcast live to anybody in the whole world. And it's free. It's amazing. Try it out. So for design and layout, here are a few quick things to keep in mind. Try to use a grid pattern or at least visualize a grid pattern. Try to choose a single focal point. Use a large, strong visual image, like the blue block that you see up above. You can use that. It could be a picture. It could be a photograph. It could be a headline or, or a pull quote. The same way, just make sure something is bigger on the page so people's eyes can get drawn, drawn to it. And make sure you balance things on the page as well. For example, use the rule of thirds. You may have heard that before. It also goes with videography as well. But try to picture the image and, and break it up into three thirds. It's okay to have white space because white space is what it's, it's pretty much a common error that is used with a lot of rookies. You want to jam everything into, into one page and give all the information all at once. And really, the recommendation is not to do that. It's to really be choosy about what information you want to use. But also with white space, it creates, it's comforting. It's easy on the eyes. And something that is larger than smaller there is a lot of, uh, you, your eyes will want to be attracted to the larger image. I know there's a lot of information here. And if I'm talking really fast and you're finding, finding it kind of hard to follow along, we're recording this today. So you'll be able to come back to these pages. If I'm zooming through too quickly, you can come back at your own pace. So keep that in mind. So with design and layout, take note that with one image, for every 350 words, use one image. And so, so people can breathe as they read. This is great for blogs. If you're a blog poster out there, keep that in mind. If you're writing an article, images really break up the space. It's really good that if you take a picture or if you do something, add a logo to your image. And I want to point out, these are two free services that you can just have online. It's Canva and PicMonkey. I'm in love with Canva right now. It's an amazing uh, software that it's free. It's not even really software. It's like a website you can go to and you can create anything you like. It's like Photoshop, but it's free. 
So uh, you can also get the business version too. I think it's only like $9 a month. So check out Canva and pick Monkey. So in your design, include a wide range of images as well. Choose graphs or charts. And Canva can help you with that and pick monkey and designing that. They have a lot of fantastic templates. Also look at cartoons and comics, because who doesn't need a good laugh these days? So remember, in your layout, make some larges elements larger than others. And it's okay to do that and leave a little bit of white space. So that is design and layout. Now we're gonna move in to photography. Please say no to stock photography. You know, I mean, how many websites have you gone to and you've seen a receptionist with the headset on and that receptionist is completely a stock photograph? That person doesn't actually work for your company. So try to be real. Try to use authentic images. Try to have images that are behind the scenes, uh, images that are real, maybe ones that can be identified with your place you know, a place that is in your property or your building or your business. These two pictures were taken by my friend, Leah. She, I'm a big fan of Leah's. She takes really great photos. And I really encourage you to check out Leah's Instagram account. So what I've done here is I want to tell you it's downloading is not a great idea either. If you see an image on Google and you right click it and you download it, not a good idea. For one thing, it's illegal to do. It's highly a big no-no. But try to photograph interesting things. Like I said, behind the scenes or people doing fun things, um, people that pictures that people can identify with. So try the do-it-yourself approach. There's lots of cameras out there that do really great digital photography. You also have your cell phone, your iPhone, and, or your Android. And you don't have to worry about film. You don't have to worry about, you can take 100 pictures and just choose one. You can try it yourself. And also you can night, you can neaten things up and tidy things up, put some nice uh, text on there or your logo by using PicMonkey or Canva. And another great idea I highly recommend is to use the pros. Professionals really can get into a really great photograph and plus, your people who are in the pictures, if you can hire um, makeup artists or hair uh, and style, people are a lot more relaxed when they know that they look good and they feel a little bit more confident, so the photo shoot will go a little bit better. So if you have it in your budget to hire somebody, I really recommend that. Now my friend Leah, as I mentioned earlier, she's the managing director for Devour, which is a food film festival in Wolfville, Nova Scotia, every fall. They do amazing things. I really encourage you to check out Devour. And I asked Leah today to share with, to, with us some tips on how she takes some really great pictures. So she uses a combination of her iPhone and her Canon Rebel. And with her Canon Rebel, she shoots a picture with a tripod, then she emails it to her iPhone to pass through a bunch of filters, which she describes as the poor man's Photoshop. So she really uses her iPhone and her camera interchangeably. She really likes to put filters in her programs, such as camera and end light and Instagram filters. And her favorite filter is clarity and blurring. And what the blurring side of it does, she says, it allows people to focus on one item and by blurring out the background. It really draws some, makes it dramatic and it really puts the focus on what the she's trying to capture. She loves to incorporate color and natural light. And she has access to a lot of interesting behind the scenes. At Devour, she likes to take people on Instagram or whatever social media channel she's using if she can take some really neat pictures of behind the scenes, make people feel exclusive, that they're getting something really cool. And plus, always at the back of her mind, she's trying to sell tickets because it's a nonprofit festival. So she's always trying to, to plug the festival in some way. And here's what I mean by Leah's pictures. She uses beautiful, uh, stunning photography. She uses the natural light. 
these are since the recent trip that she was on, uh, a recent snowstorm, uh, a couple of selfies that she's done with her food. You know, she really has a great eye, but you really, you know, if she played it through her filters, she, she really does a bang up job. I'm a huge fan. And there's our oval in Halifax. And you can see how the filters really create uh, a wonderful um, display and, and it makes you look at things you never would really look at usually and take notice of. So thanks, Leah. That was wonderful. So with photography, take note that it's easier to do photography now. We all have phones. It, you really can't say, I don't have any film in my camera. I know I'm dating myself a little bit there, but, you know, it's easier. Probably a good idea to take an online course if you really want to know. There's a lot of freebies out there that are like this free webinar here. I encourage you to take advantage of. Be creative. Have fun. You're not going to break anything. Hire the pros when you can if your budget allows. It's a really great idea. And now we're going to get into video. So video is the trend to watch in 2016. Facebook is really outpacing YouTube right now. They're really trying to break into the game. 8 billion video views a day. It's astonishing. Think of how many videos you've watched in the last few days that were on Facebook. Not even so Facebook, but think of all the other ones. Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. There's a lot of video that is out there. It's really cool. I want to mention about drones, which are fascinating because drones take us to buildings that a helicopter can't get to or somebody from the ground up looking. It's kind of fun. I love looking at drone footage right now. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but there's 360 video on Facebook. 360 video is where you can hold your camera out and if you're at a resort in Jamaica, instead of taking a picture where you can just see the picture alone, this is a video that lets you go all the way around in a 360 video, and you can actually feel like you're actually there on the trip with your friend. It's amazing. I believe it's been launched in the U.S., in some parts of Canada, but keep an eye on 360 video. It's going to be uh, a game changer, I believe. So. Here, my friends here at Firefly Video, they are a video production company. They're great friends of mine. They also wanted to provide some really great tips for you all today to share with you, to keep in mind, using your phone, using your camera, what have you. But here's what Jillian and had to share with uh, some video. So hold the camera steady. Two hands, then your arm against a solid object, like a wall, and you, or use a dedicated tripod or a phone now. So hold the camera steady. We don't want to make people nauseous. Be careful of light. Use your flash or just shoot in a really brightly lit space that's not in front of a window because the subject will be dark. The closer to the subject to the camera, the better. They say the sound will be, will be better if you can do that. And speaking of sound, if you can't hear the person, neither can the phone, if you're shooting from your iPhone or your Android. So keep that in mind. Keep it brief. Videos are very short these days. If you're doing a longer video, keep it to perhaps under three minutes because people's attention spans are very short and snappy. It's great because on Instagram, I think it's like 10 seconds. That's what you have of a video. So it's a constant psycho. cycle. <laughs> Check your background. Heavens knows what could be in the background. It could completely override you know, what you're trying to focus on. So keep an eye of your surroundings and what's around you. So thanks Firefly Video for taking care of us today and by offering some really great tips. So take note that watch your shaking, but keep it short and snappy. Hire professionals, especially if you are a professional type company, and if you're looking at something that's going to sit on your website or you want to share with your investors, go the professional route. If you're going to uh, share on Facebook or Twitter, you know, maybe you can have fun with it and use your iPhones for that. Make sure your audio is good. And there's a couple of really great free apps I wanted to draw attention to, which is Legend and Boomerang. 
They're a lot of fun. Legend lets you mix video and images and text all together. They're not complicated. They're actually free flowing. Um, so I encourage you just to check out those and download them. Today, in summary, with design and layout, have a focal point, just summing up some of the things that we talked about. There's a lot of free apps out there. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars on really expensive software. You could if you wanted to, but there's a lot of free things out there to take advantage of. Keep it simple. Don't complicate things. And videos are in huge demand right now. I really encourage you to add some motion video or motion picture to your social media. I wanted to thank you for your time today. Really appreciate you taking a few minutes to join me here. If you have any questions, please give me an email at maria at sociablemedia.co. And I really, really uh, look forward to hearing from you. Also, if you want to sign up for email, our e-newsletter, uh, which goes out from time to time, I promise not to spam you, sign up on our website. I would love to hear from you.